Melvin Musos. King Kong. Spark! Spark! Uh, uh, rip this scene off from the X-Files. Uh, whole show, Melvin Musos with King Kong. Nothing but King Kong. Hi, how are you? My name's Chris Quinlan and welcome to the 200th episode of Melbourne Musos. Uh, it's a bit of a big episode for me um, in the sense that it's number 200. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a trip down memory lane, so please forgive the living in the past a little bit tonight. Um, but anyway, what you can see behind me is essentially my shows. Uh, there's every show from 1995 plus all the master tapes and uh, there's a bit to get through. <laughs> um, plus there's also about another 30 shows sitting on um, a Channel 31 bookshelf somewhere in town. But let me tell you a little bit about the history of the show. The show started in 1995 and um, at the time uh, Channel 31 was still in, in its infancy and uh, I sort of saw a need to uh, start a show that gave musical tips, much the same way as a cooking show, let's say, uh, and just give tips to, you know, young musos coming up, um, also filming musicians. Um, at the time, I used to call it um, the best muso you never heard in your life, a little bit of a, a borrow from an old Frank Zappa CD title, um, and, um, and basically filming gigs around town. At the time, there was a little bit of a dearth of information as far as uh, music education at the time a lot of schools were getting closed down in the mid 90s and things um, happy to say it's getting a little bit better now and um, and the first 100 shows were basically tips um, the best muso you never heard in your life a little segment called how the hell did you do that which were, were quick music tips such as on drums and on guitar and all sorts of different things keyboards and the de facto backing band at the time was uh, the Zappa Instrumental. And um, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the boys in the band. Um, we did a lot of work over the years um, while we were together from 1995 to 1999. And um, without their help, um, a lot of those shows wouldn't have been able to have been made. So I'd like to thank all the boys in the Zappa Instrumental. Um, Around about 1999, um, a happy accident happened. Uh, what happened was um, I couldn't get any um, editing done at a certain place. Um, I had a deadline and um, I, the only way I could get a show to air was to do a non-stop drum tip for 26 minutes. I thought it was the dodgiest show I'd ever made. <laughs> um, but I received so many emails from that show and the ratings <laughs> sort of went right up. And when you're on a good thing, stick to it. So that was my happy accident. So it's worked out that shows 100, or well actually show 101 through to 199, um, have been um, dedicated drum tips. And I basically have been doing that live to camera uh, with no edits at all. And uh, it certainly changed the format of the show back in uh, late 1999. Oh, it's actually more mid-1999, actually right up to now. Um, last year, um, 2002, I uh, started to upgrade the show a lot more and um, I hope that you can see that the sound quality's improved 
um, I actually edit again um, and it is still technically a drum tip show although I've thrown in a few of my dodgy detective stories as plot sometimes um, so basically the, the show's had a long run um, I still want to continue doing the show I love making it. it's a part of my life now and uh, what I'd like to do with you now is share some of my more sort of uh, how would I say um, precious moments I suppose um, this is a little uh, uh, a little bit of a trip down memory lane as I say the 200th episode um, so I hope you enjoy what you're about to see and um, here's something now for you <laughs> to give you a couple of quick little tips to get around the drums quickly and fluently is the main thing. Uh, simply speaking, the most common drum filling in the world is this one. We all know that one. Why not do this? My name is Willie. I'm a pimp. Carefully now. I walked up all three stairs. Three stairs because it was a split level house, you see. <laughs> I could tell where you were by the whir of the hairdryer. And I knocked on your door. I knocked, I knocked, I knocked three times on your door. You couldn't hear me. You couldn't hear me over the noise. It's, it's one of those oh. things, it has its certain side effects. Um, but uh, you'll see what I mean. You see, what happens is to get the kind of sounds that you needed to get when you play Frank Zappa music, you need something special around the drums. And I came up with this thing and uh, it was quite good. I just had to use a bit of plastic matting uh, on the floor before I used it, but this was great. Rubber chickens are fantastic and they give you that real tone, you know? And I've never eaten cookies.
Melbourne Musos. Can, uh, can you to Australiana? I'll give you a bit of the, um, the second, first movement, the second movement, for example, was a, a very classically it's a romantic. Welcome to Melbourne Musos, I hope you can hear me. And this is um, a very special person to me here, playing and doing a sound check before he goes on tonight at the Collingwood Town Hall. This is Terry Bozzio. I'll oh, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Well, I have a good friend of mine here tonight, this is Alan Zavod. And Alan Zavod and Terry Bozzi are both Zappa veterans and they'll be talking to each other back in the dressing room. Alan, would you like to say something for all the Melbourne Muso fans? It's great to be here. There's a great musician here. We're going to look forward to having a chat. That's interesting. Yeah. Did you change the, the rhythmic feel? Exactly. And uh, like... The measure. Right. The division. And like as we all know... A five. Yes, exactly. It develops in a three feel on this side. Well, depending How on what, so? which one you emphasize it, or where you're, you know, if you delineate the time via an ostinato, say with your feet, then, you know, this could be seen in a different way. <laughs> Hello, I'm Thomas Fichter. I'm the bass player of Ensemble Modern. Uh, you might eventually know Ensemble Modern uh, by its most popular album, The Yellow Shark, that was composed by Frank Zappa. But we are also doing lots of other stuff. And uh, we just did a concert in Melbourne that uh, featured pieces by uh, Liza Lim, Adam Year, that's our Australian composers, and uh, uh, George Ligeti and Lachenmann, these are German composers, and we had a joint concert with the Australian Elysian Ensemble, and it was great fun to work welcome with them. To Melbourne, huh? what do you say? Oh. Welcome to Melbourne Musos! Ah, oh, welcome to Melbourne Musos! <laughs> Mel Melbourne Musos! I don't know! Welcome to Melbourne Musos! Welcome to Melbourne Musos! Not Musos, Musos! Muso! Hey Ma, what's a hey. what's a muso? I don't know. What's a muso? Ah, uh, musica. Musica? Yeah, musica, musica. Do you like the musica? Oh yeah, wash the car too. You wash the car to the musica? Yeah. Do you like it, the Frank Zappa? Yeah. Do you know who Frank Zappa is? I Hi. Melbourne Musos is again. This is a very special person to me here. This is Steve Vai. Okay, having a bit of a signing at Brashes before his gig at the Palace tonight. Enjoy. Hi, this is Steve Vai here at Brashes in Melbourne at Melbourne Musos. the winners of the Jethro Tull competition and as you all know the question was what did the ice cream lady do to see you win the passion play and the answer is in this album here passion play answer being <laughs> 
But uh, we've moved now to the educational, uh, look, these, these are handed to me in the form of notes, but uh, by educational I'd say that that would be a show that uh, pr provided um, something within the ambit of educational issues uh, on Channel 31. And I'm just kind of dragging that out because I'm trying to read that and it's, could you please give a big hand for the Melbourne Musos? Okay. Oh, thank you very much. That's terrific. <laughs> hey, I get two bob. Look, there's two bob in there. That's terrific. That'll go towards some tapes for the next show. No, that's yeah. about you have how to much give that back. Oh, oh, sorry. I'll buy a drink. <laughs> uh, basically, I'd like to, to thank Channel 31, first of all, for um, putting the show to air five years ago. Um, how long's Channel 31 been together for? Six years now. And uh, I've been on for five and coming up to show 150 and it's been a real roller coaster ride. It's been a lot of fun and um, it's a real community. Um, Melbourne Musos itself was put together to try and get some acts on telly that weren't getting on, um, uh, other TV networks and stuff and I think to a main degree we've all succeeded so uh, I'd really like to thank everyone involved. I'd like to thank Macca and Sam, my two friends down there I'd like to thank uh, Lustom, Yarra Access, Channel 31, and um, yeah, thank you all. Thanks very much. Okay. Okay, so all of the footage you've seen so far is basically from show number one through to show 100. These are various clips from show shows 101 to now, which is uh, show 200. Well, shows 101 to 199, let's say. And uh, let's see the change in the hairdos <laughs> and a few more wrinkles on the face. Here we go. Hello. How are you going? Um, this is show 101 and um, this is actually um, one of these ones where I'm just going to have a bit of a rave today. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on going. Probably one edit and see how uh, we go. I'm going to put in a cutaway right here to get fairly technical about it and what it is, what you'll see, is um, the fact that I'm keeping my heels down on and the And then pedals. what they did was okay, they played so a bit faster and all this and they did this little thing here. They used to put their hand underneath the hi-hat and play the bottom hi-hat so it would be...
Now, if you put that in the middle of um, the, the classic drum lick of the century there, you can get something that's fairly nifty. I'll show you how to do it. What I do now is I play very softly. I just play with mallets. Notice I've used mallets quite a lot on the show. I love the sound of mallets. And I'll just play, and I might play certain rudiments and things like that. But what I'm really doing is I'm sitting at my drum kit and I just play very softly. And I might do something like this. I might just set up with a pattern and I'll just get a, a melodic statement happening. One Iana, two Iana, three Iana, four Iana. You get that idea? <laughs> again. I can tell by all your bruises. Oh, oh, come here, you big lug. Give me a big, beautiful kiss. I get so worried for you. Well, I hope that's one thing in my life that's not gonna change. My little jazz cat and what she means to me. As for the rest of the crew here, well, Legs is doing a bit of time in the Lavy Lakes lockup, and Rance has hightailed it back to Albania, where his lead guitar playing may be a little more appreciated. They might have all come down to Melbourne on the Port Phillip Bay shoreline, but I tell you what, I bet you there'd be a bit of smoke on the Albanian, I tell you what. So here we are at the end of the 200th show. Um, once again, um, I would like to thank everybody who's been a part of the show since 1995. Um, I would also like to thank everybody at Channel 31, all the volunteers, uh, Laurie Hall in particular. Laurie, thank you very much for putting up with me delivering a show on the day that it's supposed to be aired and all of that sort of business. Thank you very much for that. And everybody else at Channel 31 over the years and everybody who has helped me behind the scenes over the years as well. Um, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for putting up with me for so long and um, hopefully putting up with me a little bit more. So um, I will say adieu, farewell for tonight and I will see you next week for show 201. Take care, keep on drumming, keep on playing. See you later. <laughs>